welcome. You too. Thanks for having me. We uh, talked on the radio show a few weeks ago, but I haven't right. seen you in a while. Since last year, I think, right? Since before the, the new year, that's right. We were in uh, Lake Tahoe with Kia, and now we're in Arizona with Ford. Yes. The new Ford Edge. So, um, you just drove part of it uh, yeah. a little bit. Huh? What What's your first impression? I was really impressed with uh, how the uh, the twin scroll four cylinder is the little handling. engine. The little <laughs> engine is is handling the the hills and the hill climbs really well, um, very smoothly. So yeah, so that's the the four cylinder two liter mm -hmm. EcoBoost engine, and really for a big car like this, I mean it's more than enough, huh? Yeah, and it's the it's the replacement for the old EcoBoost engine. And it's going to come stock on on the new Ford Edge, so yeah, they're really the making new, a transition. Yeah, that's the new standard uh, engine for this car. And they were saying last night that uh, a lot of people still want the V6, but I think it's just because it's big. <laughs> I think there's still that uh, that stigma of having a four-cylinder even yeah. even today. Um, and they said in, because Ford is on a global platform and they build yeah. all their vehicles for the global markets, uh, the fuel, flexible fuel capability of that V6 engine is, uh, they said it's attractive in the South America market. Yeah, and I think they got a little a bit of uh, criticism also with uh, when they put this engine, which is a little bit, no, the 2.7 I think is that for still a four cylinder in the Mustang. And people say, what? A, oh, yeah. a four cylinder Mustang? I don't want that. I know, it sounds a little weird to have <laughs> yeah. a sports car with a four cylinder engine, but it's amazing what they're able to do with the turbocharging yeah. uh, today and, and you really don't sacrifice that much performance and you gain a lot, you yeah. gain the fuel economy. So things changing. So this car is pretty cool. This this one is yeah. the sport now. We're in the and sport. Had, uh, I mean it takes a while even because it's so big. It's a big panoramic <laughs> panoramic roof back yeah. Nice for Arizona when well, it's cloudy like more. this might be yeah. a little hot in yeah, the summertime. I don't, don't, don't want to come in the summer to be honest. <laughs> this is a good time to come to Arizona and drive this car. So now we're in the Sport, and this is a completely different engine. Totally different. The 2.7 turbo EcoBoost also, which is like a lot of power again. Sounds good, feels good. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good uh, job with this car. And uh, they were saying that this engine um, is, is built so compactly that it's able to be mounted transversely in the uh -huh. edge, whereas I think in maybe the F-150 it's Correct. mounted uh, normal way. Yeah, so um, what other things do you like about the car? I really like uh, what they've done with the interior design. They've spruced it up quite a bit. Um, it's not too fussy, which is mm -hmm. important to me these days. Um, they've made a lot more soft touch features on the door panels, the dash, uh, nice open center console area, so lots of room for the driver and the passenger. And quite a bit of room in the back seat. Uh, pretty yeah. impressive. They said the car is four inches longer. Uh huh. Three point nine. Three, yeah, think. about about four inches longer. So they're not sacrificing that leg room in the back seat, which is a challenge in this segment. Yeah, this been a, this has been a very popular car for Ford. They sell about ten thousand of these a month. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. That's and great. I, I, I mean, I, I knew it was popular. I didn't know this. Was, I didn't know the specifics, but. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty impressive when you think ten thousand a month, and I and I don't think I see them. I notice them too much on the street. You will think yeah, that they'll be everywhere, right? Maybe now we'll notice them more <laughs> yeah, after exactly. driving it. <laughs> yeah. So, Melanie, how do you like the new uh, dashboard? I mean, like they incorporated new materials. Yeah. And like eliminated some buttons, added some buttons. And what, what do you think? I think there's like a little bit of wasted space some here, like these, these. I don't know. I agree. I think it's a. They said they wanted more tactile buttons. The consumer liked that. I like that too. I, I'm not a fan of the the kind of weird touch button where you don't really know if it understood that you touched it to do something. Or <laughs> yeah, sometimes the, the old way is better than the new ones. Huh? Yeah, and so I do like that they have more of the tactile buttons that you can memorize where they are without having to look at them. I think that's important for keeping your focus on the road. Uh, but I don't know that I would have selected these buttons and maybe the, the placement there's probably a little of wasted space here and you were talking about kind of some opportunity to have more things up here yeah, as like well. bigger screen I would love to see a bigger screen I always like a bigger yeah. screen anything <laughs> <laughs> bigger the bigger the better right yeah exactly but it's good I think I mean uh, I guess now they fix all the issues with the sync system and all that so it's working fine 
Yeah, this is uh, this is the new sink. I think it rolled out on the 2014 models, and they're expecting sink three to come out uh, at the end of this year on yeah. model 2016 models. And that's I believe they have a partnership with BlackBerry on that. I can't remember the specifics. But BlackBerry still but, exists. <laughs> oh yeah, they still exist. You have one? No. I have not had one since I worked on Capitol Hill. <laughs> <laughs> So one, one cool thing that it has is has like this huge, huge, huge compartment for the part. phone, and they can you can put like the big. Uh, I wish I brought plus. my six plus to see just how like well, much I mean, extra you can, room you can, is, you is can there. That's great. Judge by the hand, it's like weighs all the way up here, so yeah. it's like more than enough. Maybe and you got two USB ports here to charge. You can charge your phone, two phones, your tablet. Um, there's a little compartment back here that uh, passes through, so you can put high, high a wallet here, yeah. or, or even a like an iPad mini or some sort of little small tablet back there. And it's got that grippy rubber right there so things won't slide around, which is nice. And there's a new um, compartment right here for hidden storage when you're not in the car. Or, you know, you keep your key up there, your wallet for kind of quick access. Well, hopefully you'll take the key because if you leave the key in the car, it's going to be a problem. You don't want to leave the key in the car. <laughs> the car won't lock if the key is in it. Yeah, some cars do park. They'll, they'll lock, I'm seeing. When you park them and you leave the key inside, I think. Yeah. That can be a big problem. So I think so far our coolest. Oh, you can. Uh, you can't have, do it while you're driving. Okay, huh? we'll do it next time when this we get the, there. This is not the airplane where you get the view of the front <laughs> yeah, exactly. of where you're okay. flying. Airbus 380. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that it has the heated and the cool uh, ventilated seats yeah. here in Arizona. I imagine that's a the cool seats is a well, really Miami, great feature. When you come and visit and Miami, Miami, we can get yeah. used to it or not. I think that's one of my favorite features that are on cars today. That and that remote start now. I needed a remote start this winter in DC. It was quite cold, um, but I didn't have it, so I had to go out and start the car <laughs> and then come back inside. I think the um, you know the the plated metal accents and you know the black interior is very simple and sleek. It's not fussy. I like that the that what's in front of the driver. You have two. Uh, screens that can monitor separate things about the vehicle so you can monitor your fuel economy yeah. um, your navigation instructions what radio station you're listening to so it's nice to have what do you those mean what features. radio station it's only one it's only one which one's that <laughs> one there? Sirius XM Radio Channel 153 that's right <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's simple, it's elegant. I think they, they've done a good job with that. It's roomy. It's, you know, I've got plenty of leg room and there's still plenty of room for passengers in the back seat. So they've done a, a great job uh, spacing everything out. Um, in the interior, yeah, I like it a lot how they what they've done with the, like the little details, even like the door paneling, yeah. like the way they they present things, even the cup holders and the side mm -hmm. doors are like really well put together. You can tell a lot of market research and, and consumer feedback went into making this new Edge. And they were talking a little bit about that yesterday and how how much the consumer's opinion has uh, positively impacted the, the things that have stayed the, st the same on the Edge and the things that have that changed. That has changed, yeah. yeah in, the, in the exterior, it's changed uh, quite a bit, I think. One thing that I'm not really crazy about is like the hood. That's the only thing I don't like about the car. I think these two... If bumps you're more on the petite, top. Petite size driver. Yeah. It's a little tough to see over the hood. And the, that, the, the, the cover of the dashboard here is a, way, a little bit too long, but I guess. But you do have that front 180 degree camera to help you out, so you, <laughs> you can, can see watch what's it. in front of you. <laughs> here it is. It's like a, one of the cool features about this car. A lot of technology. Lots of technology. There you go. I mean, you That's can right. watch the whole thing. It's incredible. Like, this little thing that. that they pack a lot of uh, technology in a, in a affordable yeah. car. And no, yeah, I mean, I, that, was gonna, I, that was my next point. I mean, it starts around 24 and it goes all the way, like, close to 40. But mm -hmm. when you add up everything that you get into the car, it's like a lot. $40,000 and you get all 40, technology. 000. That's the most you can spend on this car. It's very, very competitive um, in, in its segment, price-wise and feature-wise. And I think making the updates to the interior to make it a little bit more high-end feeling 
and to the exterior making the, the design a little more svelte yeah. and uh, that's really going to be attractive to a, even a broader base than probably what is already loving the, their own edges right now. So Ford claims that this car appeals exactly the same, 50% to females and 50% to males and like they go to really specific things like for example the the handle the in the, and the door. door and like there were like some research well they don't, you don't they, agree they, with that they, at all huh? I, I like to have a little compartment on the side i'm not the woman that has the long fingernails all the time so yeah. that doesn't bother me i'd rather have a little a little compartment but yeah. there's plenty of other storage in the car to kind of make up for that yeah um, and I, I think i mean i like the car i think especially the sport uh, i would have uh, rather have a yellow color that I you think like it's really color. cool. <laughs> you want to be like, this is me in my exactly. edge. Exactly. <laughs> so this red color, I think it's, it's nice, but I think it's a little bit too serious for me. I don't know. But anyway. What do you think about the the active and passive safety features like the lane departure or the, it's called lane keep assist yeah. on board system. And uh, you can turn it on and off. And, do, you, do you need uh, we, that? Do you feel like you need uh, that feature? I mean, it's kind of good, I think, because sometimes that some people think that they can do everything at all time. I mean, you get distracted, obviously, yeah. on the road. And so it's better to have it than done. Uh, and so I mean, it's pretty impressive, really. I mean, the car almost drives itself in that situation. And I, I think that's where we're getting into the near yeah, future, right? That's where we're seeing these autonomous driving features kind of wiggle their way into today's cars. They're partial autonomous driving features. Yeah. Um, this car also comes with the forward collision alert system that'll break for you if you're riding too close to the car. Park yeah, some car manufacturers are saying that the goal is to have zero accidents, so it's part of it, I guess. It's gonna, if it's gonna work, every little piece is gonna be in place for that. It'll be interesting to see how the technologies change the way people drive too. You know, yeah, I used right. to think that oh, I don't need a backup camera. That's just that's just <laughs> silly. I don't need that. I don't want that. And now that I've had one for the last three years on my car, it's like I well, get in a car without one. I'm like, what do I do? You know, it takes you forget how to uh, feel out the far corners of your your vehicle a little bit, but. You know, we're not going back to not having. So, in, in those uh, to that point, they have. This is the first Ford that has parallel assist and perpendicular, perpendicular. assist. Which, like the perpendicular thing, is like ah, that's easy. Everybody can do it. But again, like once you try it and you let the car do it, it's pretty cool. No? It's How did you cool. like it? I thought it was really, it was really neat. Um, I still think that I would park it faster <laughs> yeah, that exactly, way. Yeah. But, I'm also, we're people who drive cars all the time and feel very comfortable in cars and in those yeah. situations. The, these technologies are not made for people like us who drive um, different vehicles all the time and are comfortable. So, and I think that the first time that you use those systems, like the, the, the smart um, intelligent cruise control, the park assist and all those things, you have to learn to trust them. I mean, like, the yeah. first time you use it, it's like, wow, really? Is it going to work or not? <laughs> Absolutely. I didn't get to try out the, the parallel park assist, but I have a pretty good parallel parking record. So. Oh, really? Yeah. We have to try that one day. I'm the, We're going to do a competition. The family driver and parker. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I need to park the car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have had friends before, like, they try to park it and I'm riding with them. I'm like, do you want me to just do that for you? <laughs> I can so help I you with that. So I pass that part of my driving test, thankfully. Excellent. So we're going to keep enjoying here uh, Arizona in the winter. We're still in winter now. Yeah, pretty, we're getting close to spring. <laughs> it's 90 degrees, but it's... no, actually, it's only 66 here today, so it's kind of nice. So we're gonna keep driving the Ford Edge back to Phoenix and then um, hopefully I'll see you the next time Sounds somewhere good. else. Uh, hopefully it's not another somewhere warm. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, my lady. Thank you. Bye.